I just released ChatGPT 5. I just finished watching the release video where they talked up all of the capabilities. It's available right now in the API. I'm in my OpenAI account in the playground. I've chosen GPT-5. There's also GPT-5 Nano and Mini. I'm just going to test right now the GPT-5 on the things that we usually test here on this channel, and that is with writing and author-related things like coming up with a premise, an outline, doing the actual writing of chapters, coming up with a website, coming up with an app that's related to the book or book series. I think this is going to be kind of fun. You can see that I've already started because I accidentally deleted my first part of the recording. What I did is put in a pretty detailed prompt. I want to test it first on coming up with a premise and an outline. And it took less than a minute to come up with this information. I asked it to analyze the biggest bestsellers from the last 10 years. And here's what it found in its phase one analysis. It talks about unreliable perspectives, the twist that rekeys the whole first half, unsafe domesticity, which is very interesting, deeply flawed leads with buried secrets. I think that's been pretty common in bestsellers forever. Pacing and structure, themes audiences respond to, identity and memory. Interesting. I do like those kinds of stories. So synthesis and creation, synthesizing the patterns found in those bestsellers from the last decade into this premise. <clears throat> Here's the high concept premise it came up with. I have read this once before, just a few minutes ago, but I think it's pretty good. Here's the premise. A crime scene photographer with face blindness thinks she has rebuilt a safe life in a meticulously uniform cul-de-sac until a neighbor is found dead. Evidence suggests the man that's been in her bed on crucial nights wasn't her husband. As she hunts for a killer, she must rely on non-facial clues. I really like this because it provides opportunities for tension later in the story. As a reader, I'll be looking for the habits. Back to the premise. While hiding the secret that once her expert testimony misidentified a subject and ruined a life. The more she decodes the sameness around her, the more she realizes it was designed to be weaponized against her. I really like how the plot is embedded in the character and vice versa. And that her marriage may be the most dangerous blind spot of all. As far as a high concept premise, I like it. Then we have a protagonist with core flaws, secrets, primary motivation, and antagonist with the same. We have these core tropes used in this outline and premise based on the analysis of the bestsellers from the last decade. Then we have a detailed beat sheet, three-act structure, 15 beats, probably from the Save the Cat methodology, which I actually really like, even though it's for writing scripts for movies. I find it very helpful for writing stories but you can certainly use whatever you want and like. And I haven't really read that detail through here. You can pause and look through it if you want, but it seems pretty good to me. What I asked it to do is take that information and expand into a detailed scene by scene list. And I haven't looked at that yet, but I did want to highlight this notes for execution, structure the book with a brisk voice driven chapters, intercut with brief filled notes from Olivia's non-face ID journal and HOA messages to seed clues. I think that's an interesting way to incorporate different devices into the story. The emotional engine is Olivia refusing, this time, to lie to herself or to the police to protect someone she loves, choosing truth even at the cost of her marriage. So there's this hard choice baked in, which I do think makes for a better story. Let's see how it did, how ChatGPT5 did with expanding this information, the outline and the premise and the beat sheet into a scene-by-scene -scene list. Okay, so we have an expanded premise here. Here's the scene-by-scene scene outline. Act one, here is scene one, the morning calibration. We have the setting, the goal, the conflict, the reveal, and the hook. All for scene one, and this is in act one. Let's see how many do we have in act one. There's actually a lot of scenes, which I like, because a lot of times in previous models, ChatGPT and other AIs will include too few scenes. 14 is a good number. This is the first time I can remember that it's given a number that I thought could be an actual act one. Actually, we're not even in act two yet. It actually has 16 scenes. I like it. I like that a lot. All of these components in each scene makes it super easy to write, or you can tweak this if you want to change anything and have the AI write it for you, which is what I'm going to do in just a moment, just to see how well it writes. All right, so act two, let's go through here. Looks like there's a lot of scenes here too. I really like it. I'd have to look deeper to see the progression of the story, but 
I bet it works. We're already at scene 31. This is still act two. Here we are at act three, and this is where we're headed toward the final meeting, the conflict and the climax and resolution. These are a lot of scenes. Good. And it's all very detailed. So there's 51 scenes. I'm impressed with that. I'm impressed with everything. It's added here with all these elements per scene. This one probably took about one to three minutes if I had to guesstimate how long this took. All right. Notes on pacing and suspense. And keep chapters short, three to six pages to maintain momentum. Ensure every scene ends with a question, a new piece of evidence, or a complication to sustain reader compulsion. Definitely want to have a variety of the ways that you end your scene in my opinion. All right, now let's find out if it can actually write. Let me come up with a prompt. Please now write chapter one through three based on the premise, outline, beat sheet, and scene by scene outline above. We're going to let it loose. It's already done. That probably took less than two minutes. Looks like we're at the end of the scenes and the chapters. I do want to check how many characters and words that it generated, but most importantly, I want to see how well can it write. Chapter one, calibration. The coffee maker is new and wrong. Yesterday's model died with a heroic hiss, and Andrew brought home a replacement with the same chrome angles and the same name and the slightly more expensive font. It's supposed to be identical. Same line, just newer, he said, but it screams at a higher pitch. I hear it before I open my eyes, a bright knife of sound that cuts the dark. Off, I tell it. I don't speak loudly. Voice is enough if you use the right tone and right distance. The machine switches to a quieter throat clearing. I stand in the kitchen with bare feet on tile and hold my phone up like a tuning fork. The old drip was an F sharp when it finished. This one settles into a G. I record it and title the file Coffee Finish G. The cupboards are labeled, not with words. Andrew would tease me for that but with the thin bands of colored tape under the lip of the shelf. Gray for plates, cream for bowls, pale green for cups. The cups are always tricky. I track my color and weight. I prefer the heavier cups. They announce themselves without making me look. Out the window, the cul-de-sac is a hush of neutral. HOA-approved paint coats, regulated hedges clipped into a uniform way. When we toured the house, Andrew said the sameness was what made people comfortable. You know what you're getting, he told me hand warm on the small of my back, a street of anchors, all matching. My phone buzzes on the counter. HOA storm watch. Gusts and heavy wind expected tonight. Secure shutters and gutters. I open the back door to check the gutter hooks and damp breath of the late autumn finds me. The boards are slicker than they look. I smell soil and something clean and bright from the yards next door. The soap that Noah keeps in his workshop sink. Citrus tucked into cement dust. I think that's an awesome sentence. It threw me for a loop there at the beginning. This is in first person, which I don't usually like, but I didn't tell it what POV to use, and this is fine. Actually, this helps us get into the sense of the character. Let's see what it can do with dialogue before we move on. Liv, Andrew's voice threads down the hall. He is two doors away. He sounds sheepish. I don't have to look to see him. I like to build him in pieces. The weight of his steps is familiar. Pigeon-toed so the heels skim the edges of the rug and catch on a thread. Rowan keeps complaining about in the HOA chat. The scrape of his wedding ring on the doorframe when he turns the corner in a tiny private song. These details are pretty cool. The ring has a nick on the right side from a ladder slip two years ago. He keeps meaning to get it buffed out. He doesn't. The mark is an anchor for me. I don't tell him that. He kisses the place under my ear. Laundry soap, cedar, morning breath, clean. Did you mount the shutters again or did you just tell Rowan you did? I ask, turning into him. I do own a contracting company. Sometimes I even use it on our house. Being married to a builder doesn't mean my gutters matter more, I say. It means you get to nag me with authority. It's actually funny. So it did actually write all three of these chapters. Great. I have a sense that it could write a lot more. Okay, what do we want to test next? Let's test the coding capability. Just to give you an update. I did ask it to create an image, but I forgot I didn't have the image tool selected in the OpenAI Playground. Plus, I'm not, I guess, authorized to use that yet. Anyway, so we're going to skip that. But what it did was create a great set of working titles. Also, it came up with a whole book cover concept that could be handed to a graphic designer. We could put this into an AI image generator 
with these instructions. And this concept covers everything from the title, the author name, the typography, the color palette, the production finishes, the spine, the back cover. There's a concept A, concept B, concept C. So it gives you some different ideas to play around with to see what you like. There's ebook Kindle optimization. I didn't even ask for all this. Audiobook, series brand system, and here's a deliverable checklist. It's given me all these things. The next thing I want to do is test on how well it can code. So I asked it to create a website in HTML. So that way I could pull it up on my browser and show it to you. All I did was give it this prompt. Please create code for a website in HTML that is beautiful and professionally styled that I can open on my browser and view. I didn't even tell it to connect that to this book we were writing together, but I hope that it will do that. We're going to see, it looks like it finished it. It's kind of a hot mess. Okay, here it is in a little bit better of a system. All right, there's not much to it, so I'm going to copy this, open it up on my browser, and we're just going to see what it looks like together. And what I did was copy the code, drop it into a notepad file on my desktop, and save it as an HTML file, open it up in my browser. And I'm not very impressed with this first version. I'll see if I can get something better. The apps and different things they created in the release video looked a lot better than this. So maybe it's the prompt that I used. It did actually add some images here, which is kind of cool. And there's some neat sections like the reviews and the full sample and the excerpt, book info, different links. There's also about the author and sign up for a newsletter. But overall, this is pretty basic. Let's see if we can get a better version. Now I've come up with a much better prompt. I'm thinking we'll get a much better website this time. We'll find out. But again, this is super fast. The writing is really good. The coming up with the ideas and the premise and outline, top notch. I like it for that. Can't wait to try more. Again, we're using this in the playground, so it's not exactly going to be a perfect test or set of tests. But I hope that you find it helpful. Holy hell, guys. This is so much better. I think maybe it was user error on how I copied the first code. Look how good this is. This is actually crazy. All right, so we have the man in her bed. Summary, hook, reviews, author. Let's see if it goes anywhere. Oh, it actually drops it down here. Here's the summary, why you'll be hooked, what readers are saying. Look, that's neat. Interactive about the author. Okay, Nightgate Press. Definitely made that up. This is actually pretty cool. Buy now, read the summary. I guess that's right there. When I give it a very simple prompt, like just create a website, the results weren't great, but I also think that I copied the code wrong, so I don't want to blame that on ChatGPT5. For my last test, I wanted to test ChatGPT5's ability to create an app for authors that I am calling Author DNA Analyzer. The concept is that the app will analyze a piece of text and generate a writer's DNA profile, breaking down the user style into a percentage mix of famous authors. I'm hoping that the results will be insightful and fun. I've included some instructions here, and it actually just came back with the code for this app. Now I'm going to figure out how I can test it and show it to you. You know this review isn't fake because I'm not cutting out all the flops. The first app didn't really work for me. I found several bugs, not a lot. And I wasn't really sure how to test it. Like, this could be more user error than chat error. I'm running it again, but I think it created a command line prompt app game interface kind of thing. I don't want that. I want something a little bit cleaner to use. So I'm asking it for a second version of this same kind of app that I can just run and, and preview in the browser. I'll let you know how this works and show you in just a moment. Okay, this looks really good. You could probably tell that it uses a lot of the design features of the website, but you can paste your writing in to discover your author DNA. You can put up to 300 words here. I copy and pasted some text from a short story I wrote. I clicked analyze author DNA and said proceed anyway because it was a shorter version. And here's what it said based on your sample and a balanced cadence that flows without calling attention to itself. The overall effect blends clarity with atmosphere, yielding prose that feels assured and absorbing. And it gave me 42% Kazo, I might be butchering the name, for my restrained voice, veiled emotion, 32% Haruki, for your cool detachment and dreamlike drift, and 26% Ursula, for your lucid world building and clarity. You could copy it, you could save it, 
You could try other snippets of your copy. That's actually pretty cool. I'm really impressed with this. That's the end of these tests. Let me know which one you like the most and how you're going to be testing out ChatGPT in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.